beyond them. We believe in a doctrine of total depravity. We believe that this is true for all of humanity, every single human born onto this earth, other than Jesus Christ, our Savior, that we need nothing than what is in our that is in our hearts, in our minds, nothing that the sin, nothing but the sin that is in our very nature to condemn us for all eternity, ma'am. That's what we believe for all people, including myself, that had it not been for the grace of God being extended to me, I would be the same. I would be lost in my sins. I would be, I would be underneath God's judgment and His wrath, and I would be a slave to my sin as we are apart from Him, as it says in Romans, that in our sinful ways, apart from Christ, apart from His Spirit, we have no power over our sin. We have no control over it, but we're slaves to it. We're bound by it. It's as, it's as if we're shackled down by it. We can't leave it. We can't run from it. We can't flee from it because it's a part of us. But the Word of God says that we can be set free from that and that the only way is to repent from your sins and receive the gift of grace that is extended to us through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, ma'am. And that is why we come out here to preach this. That is why every week I will preach this same message to you over and over because we believe it to be true and we believe that it's the most important thing anyone can hear. And we disagree with the others around here, maybe, because we have different tactics because we don't come from a secular worldview. Because we're not just here to save lives, but we want to save souls, man, because we believe the Word of God is the only thing that has the power to do that. We believe that the name of Jesus Christ, that His blood was shed for us, that He came down as a real human, lived a real life, suffered real pain, that His, his body was beaten, broken, and bruised for us, that He endured flogging and lashes and being nailed to a cross. He was mocked and scorned, and He was the very God of our universe who created us, who knew us before the foundation of the world, who knew we were going to be sinners, who knew we would rebel against us, and even in our sinfulness, even in our wickedness, He came down, and He loves us. He extended His love to us, even knowing that we are sinful people, knowing that we would rebel. He came down and said, I love you enough to die for you, even when you spit on me, even when you reject me. Even when you mock me, he loves us enough to die for us, as wicked as we are. And yet in our society today, we turn from that. We turn from the truth that we know in our hearts to be true, to the natural revelation that God has given us to see who he is, that he is ingrained into our very nature. We're so wicked that we turn from that. We turn from a, a holy and loving and perfect God and say, no, God is the one who's evil. God has no right to condemn me. I'm a good person. I'm good enough on my own. I haven't done this. I haven't murdered anyone directly. I've never done, said that big of a lie. I've never stolen something worth that much. And we try to excuse ourselves from God's wrath, saying that we are good and that God is not that good, that He is evil, that He has no right to condemn me or to condemn good people because they've lived good lives. But no, that is not true, ma'am. We know that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And it doesn't just mean that we've missed the mark a little bit, that we have strayed a little off the path and can, oh, just hop right over and get on the, get back on the good path and we're good to go. It means that we've turned completely 180 and ran from God and said, I want nothing to do with you. I don't want your goodness. I don't want your grace. I don't want to follow your law or your commandments. I don't want that. That's what we all have said. And we all have ran from God and fleed from him. And yet he loves us enough to draw us near to him, to extend an opportunity to extend his gift of grace to us, for us to repent of our sins and come to him and say, God, I need you. God, I am wicked and I am worthless apart from you, that I deserve hell, but God, you have given me the grace and set me free from that. God is the only way that our life now can have meaning, that our life now is worth anything. Apart from him, there is no promise of happiness or joy to come. Is that we live here, come here for 50, 60, 70, 80 years, maybe more, maybe less. We live our lives, we have fun, we're sad sometimes, we're happy sometimes, and then we die, and then we're condemned to hell for all of eternity because we in this life failed to acknowledge God as the God that He is and bow our knees to Him and say, God, I want you to be the ruler of my life. I want you to set me free from my sin, from whatever things that may feel pleasurable and good now. I want to reject those things, God, and I want to follow your law. I want to be a slave to you and to your righteousness and not to my own self. We are called to die to self, to pick up our own cross, to carry it, 
and live as servants to Christ for this small, momentary, fixed time that God has allowed us.